everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent in Canterbury and in this video tutorial I want to show you a very uh, nice method how we can try and figure out the active site of an enzyme without doing any particular lab work. So let's say I am interested in a protein uh, called SIR A. I probably should write that properly here. Sir A. This is a protein that is found in a number of bacteria and uh, the particular function of this protein is it is a sh molecular chaperone that helps other proteins to fold into the right conformation and it's also uh, something that's called a peptidyl prolulsis transisomerase. So I want to find out what are the uh, active what is the active site and what are very conserved regions in this protein so what i do is i just simply go to uniprot here uh, that's my database and they have a number of uh, information or have a lot of information about this uh, protein about this sir a from uh, various organisms so what i do now is i just simply pick a number of these organisms let's say we pick uh, the e coli one so here is the e coli and you can have a look at this um, database uh, lots of information in there and it's also the protein sequence the amino acid sequence here uh, I copy that, the sequence, and then I've prepared a, a simple text document and I just simply uh, copy uh, my sequence in here. So I call this Sir A. coli and I've done that uh, for other uh, organisms here. So for example, this is the Sir A. from Yersinia pestis. Uh, this is the Sir A. from uh, Photobacterium and so on and so forth. So I've prepared a little, a little um, file here. And what I'm now doing is I compare these different sequences with each other. And to do so, I go to another uh, database which is called Clustal W2 so, and the, the link uh, is here and what I'm going to do is I just simply copy let me try this again I simply copy my different sequences into this field here let's see if this works mm, i need to do that again let's see if it works this time copy and now put it back in yeah, this time it worked. So I've got all my sequences in here and I ask this program, this Cluster W2, this bioinformatics tool, to compare these different sequences. So all I need to do is press the submit button. And apparently I made uh, an error somewhere. Let's see if it works better this time. Yes, now it is working. Uh, so the job is currently running and now here I get a comparison of all the different sequences. So here's my Sir A. coli, here's the uh, Salmonella, Pestis, Photobacterium, uh, Thiobacterium, I can't remember what the other one is. And what this program actually uh, tries to do is it aligns the amino acid sequences so that uh, they really are in a way a best fit and what we see here is we uh, and it indicates where there is a good fit where the amino acids have similar properties uh, it is with this colon here so for example you see here we have an R an arginine residue here we have a lysine lysine arginine lysine lysine all these residues are positively charged um, 
Here, where we just have a dot, this indicates that there is some kind of similarity between the amino acids. And where there is a star, we find perfect similarity of all the amino acids in the of the amino acids in this between these different organisms. So at this position here, there is an A, an alanine residue, in whatever organism we look at. Now, what we are looking when we are looking for um, say an active site is that there are several identical residues uh, next to each other. So what we are looking for are residues where there are quite a number of stars close to each other. So we look at the sequence here, well, there's not a huge uh, homology between the amino acids. There are not a lot of similar amino acids here. Well, we've got two stars here, so uh, this um, isoleucine and this alanine, and uh, th these are residues that are conserved between the different species. So it could be that they are important. But if we scroll a little bit further down, what we see here is uh, a stretch of similar and identical amino acids. So this here is, uh, if you like, is a region here where there are lots of identical amino acids here. And we have uh, another similar thing over here. So again, we have a stretch of similar and identical amino acids. So for example, here this D is conserved. Here, for example, this uh, w is conserved, highly conserved. So this indicates that these are residues that are important for the function of this enzyme in all the organisms that we are looking at. And my bet is that this is a very, these two stretches here that we have are good candidates for the active site of this enzyme. So this shows you how you can try and identify enzyme active sites without doing a, a lot of work. You just compare the enzymes of different species with each other and ask where are identical amino acids located. Because where there are identical amino acids located, that indicates that these residues are important for the enzyme function. And uh, if they are important for the enzyme functions, they are usually a binding site or an active site. So I hope this makes uh, sense and uh, thank you very much for watching.